It's August. Kick off the spooky season around here. I have some fun, vintage-inspired projects for you today. Welcome to Opal Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today is the first Friday challenge, hosted by Lisa of Our Gray House and Sarah of Jujubee DIY. This month, our guest host is Holly of Lamb Living. Our theme is to create with paint sticks. You'll find links to their channels in the description box, along with the playlist. I bought three packs of paint sticks from Home Depot for a buck 48 each. So what I've done is cut them down with my chop saw. My longer sticks are nine inches each. There are seven of those for each box. I'm making two boxes. Shorter ones are five and 13 sixteenths. And there are four of those for each box. We'll hang on to the excess wee bits. We're gonna need them later. I'll give one side of my nine inch sticks a coat of white paint. I'll paint the shorter ones black on both sides. Then I'll paint the back of the nine inch ones black also. Remember those scraps? We're gonna give them a coat of black too. I've pulled out my big old square to align my sticks and I'll glue them together with both wood glue and a dab of hot glue to form a background board for the shadow box. And I'm making two exactly the same. I'll glue those wee scrap bits across the back spanning all the sticks, you know, for extra support. I've cut scrapbook paper to fit my background board thingy and I'm gonna slather a healthy coat of Mod Podge to the board and to the back of the paper. Now I painted this white just in case, you know, the wood were to show through. This way, I got no problems. Know what I mean? Now that I got Mod Podge on the board and the paper, I'll apply it, and I'm going to hit it with my brayer. And now I'm going to add a top coat. I distress the paper with some ink. I'll hit the edges with some black and just lightly on the very surface. Oh, and I'm also using a little gray there too, apparently. <laughs> That's some um, Hickory Smoke by Tim Holtz. Yeah, okay, now I come in with the black and hit those edges. Here's where I realized I made a mistake. I should have waited to put the back supports on after I squared the sides. Would have made it easier if the board was flat. Worked out in the end, but next time I'll do it afterwards. Okay, once again, I'm just using wood glue and a wee bit of hot glue to hold these together. I'm adding a line of glue along the joint in the back, which I'm going to do to each piece, just for extra support. I'm going to add the cross pieces across the front and we'll be done with the box for the moment. Now let's work on the scenery. We'll need some model magic. I grab a handful of clay, roll it into a ball, and I'm going to flatten it a wee bit I, I want some thickness to this because this is going to be our moon. There we go. Now I'll roll a small ball for the center of his nose. And two smaller balls <laughs> for his nostrils. I roll out a cane of clay 
cut a wee bit off, just a wee bit. And I'm gonna use that as the bridge of his nose. I don't know, it might be about a quarter inch maybe? Maybe a half inch? I don't know. I'll cut a thin cane of clay in half to use as a sprayle. And I'll use my clay tool to smooth where the clay sections meet. You can do this with a paintbrush handle too. I want these sections to look like one piece. Rolling another cane. Once again, I'll cut two small pieces of the clay from the cane, this time for his sleepy eyelids. And I'll shape them with my tool. I want the bottom of the lid to protrude slightly more than the top. So I'll use the brush handle to flatten them down a bit. And I'm gonna repeat this on the other eye. I'll cut another small ball in half for his cheeks, press them into place, and I'll incorporate them into the other clay using my clay tool. I'll come up under his cheeks with the handle of the clay tool and add some dimples. I rolled a thicker cane to add his pouty lower lip and I'm going to add some texture to that. I'm just flattening it with my thumb and I'm going to come in and just add some ridges and lines. I'll add some character lines to his eyes. And of course, he needs some craters. And then I'm going to set him aside overnight to dry. Now that he's dry, I'll use some floating medium to mix up a wash to stain him. All I'm going to do is get some medium on my brush. Then I'm going to pull some drizzle gray from the puddle, kind of mix them together on my plate, and I'm going to coat him in sections. Sweeping back my mixture with the paper tail as I go along. And I really want to get into all the nooks and crannies. I'll repeat this process. This time with ceramic coat rain gray, which is slightly darker, and I'm focusing on really getting into his features. I'll do this until I'm happy with them. To seal him, I'll use a cosmetic sponge to pound on a nice healthy coat of Mod Podge. I've cut the rest of my scene from black vinyl with my cameo to give it a shadowy silhouette effect. We have a bendy autumn tree with leaves blowing around, a picket fence, and a black cat. I lightly dry brush the outside of the box with rain gray to distress. Now you know I love my bottle caps, so I'll add a vinyl 31 to the center, then I'm going to distress it with some black ink all around the circumference of the bottle cap. I decided to dry brush the vinyl elements with some marine gray too, ever so slightly, just to kind of highlight them. I glue the moon into place with 3-in-1 glue and a dab of hot glue. I made a bunting of pennants from bits of ribbon and baker string, which I'm going to drape across the top.
and I'll coil the remaining baker string and glue it to the sides. I'll add the bottle cup bottom center with 3-in-1 glue and I'm going to add some faux screw heads to flank it on either side. These are made from a silicone mold and hot glue. I like to have these and some gears on hand for projects just like this, so I make them ahead of time. All that's left to do is spray it with clear med sealer. For our second shadow box, I'm using this absolutely adorable Wee Foam Owl from Dawn at Shabby Meets Bling. She has an Etsy shop where she sells these cuties, as well as the sweetest ghosts and bats. I'll link her shop in the description box for you. She makes them from foam and hand carves the back. I'm going to cut the back from this guy since, you know, we need him to lay flat. And I'm just using a serrated knife for this. It cuts super easy and really nice and clean. I'll give this wee fellow two coats of black acrylic paint, and I gotta say that the foam takes the paint beautifully. While he dries, we'll work on our clay tree that will go into our other box. This is pretty straightforward. I'll roll a clay cane on the thicker side for the bottom part of the tree trunk. I'm gonna press it flat and line it up along the side of the box you know, giving it a rough shape of a tree trunk. I'll add a thinner cane as a branch for the outer perch on. And again, this is just a rough shape. I'm also going to add more clay to form the top of the tree. I'm pushing it flat and up and under that cross piece. And I just use my tool to shape the tree a wee bit. Now I'm twisting out a long cane of clay right onto the perch. It'll give that haunted gnarly tree vibe. And I'll add a few more, just two more, I think, for good measure. And I'll add one single branch up here at the top. I'll add some grooves to mimic the wood grain, and then we're going to let that dry overnight. Let's paint the owl's details. I'll fill in the inner part of the eye with drizzle gray, just painting in that little gully that's in the mold. And now I'm going to outline his ears with the drizzle, and I'm going to do his beak too. I paint the outer part of his eye with white. Now I'm going to come in and hit the rest of the raised details with some of that hickory smoke ink on a cosmetic sponge. This worked perfectly to pick up all of those details. As you can see, I'm just dabbing it on. I can't believe how well this worked. This went so quick and it was really a lot of fun. Okay, the tree is dry and ready for some paint. So I'm gonna give it a coat of rain gray. I'll use the same wash technique that I did for the moon, but this time I'm using Hippo Gray for my first coat, and I'm, again, getting into those little grooves. My second coat will be a wash of charcoal, and as always, I'll have all of my supplies listed in the description box for you. I'll dry brush the box with drizzle just like I did with the other one. Now for this shadow box, I cut a wee vinyl crescent moon and some stars, which will go up here in the corner. I 
I'll attach my ale just above his perch with three-in-one glue and a tiny wee dab of hot glue to hold it in place quickly. I'll add the bunting and the bottle cap and the faux screws just like I did on the other box. And I decided that a knob at the top of each box was necessary too. So just adding that with hot glue, it's just a painted bead, you know, wooden bead. That was just one of those last minute details I felt was necessary. So there he is, all cute. Do check out Dawn's Etsy, as I said, she has some cute stuff. It will be linked below. Here's a final look at our vintage inspired Halloween shadow boxes. Thank you Lisa, Sarah, and Holly for hosting. Links to their channels are in the description box along with the creator's playlist. Playlist. <laughs> Please be sure to check them out and show everyone some love. I hope you enjoyed today's projects. There are plenty more fall and Halloween DIYs coming over the next few weeks. Can't wait. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.